based upon that information, um, as far as two terms that stuck out, misrepresentation and or fraud, based upon their internal controls, um, based upon that, that's really what you was um, auditing the information that they provided. And you made it clear that based upon that information and the representation of what you've seen, um, that's really the product that you report to us. Um, that's, that's in general pretty much correct. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, we, what we're issuing is called unmodified opinion. It means there are no modifications necessary to your financial statements that were needed to be in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about fraud and regularities. We didn't notice any fraud during our engagement, but our engagement is not to detect and search for fraud, though we do some procedures related to it. Just want to make sure we're clear there. that We're, we're doing a financial statement audit and we do test for some fraud in there, but we're not doing a forensic audit or a fraud investigation. Right, and you also, um, as far as the internal controls, um, I know now we will go to a quarterly type of review um, as far as with the council <coughs> and the departments. And you know, I always sometimes look at monthly reviews, reviews but we go in quarterly. And um, would that be an example of an internal control? I would say, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a more of a procedure. Mm -hmm. um, but depending on what the, if the level of review is authorizing it, that is certainly an internal control. If the level of review. So you're looking at a quarterly report review to do, um, to look at review financial statements on a quarterly yeah. basis? Yeah. Yes. I, I think that's an internal control. That's what I thought. I thought it might be considered an internal control. I know under regular government, the charter makes sure that we get good information. We can even ask financial information under oath and make sure we get the best information that we can. And I know that's something that then, you know, fits into what I read about internal control. So believe me, when I read and review and get ready, and I looked at your work product, and knowing that time is moving by fast, <coughs> and there have been many audits before I got here, I looked at this independent audit, auditor's report as a product of management's discussion and analysis that was provided to you. That's a fair way to say it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead again. I'm not sorry, but go ahead. <laughs> You're fine. So that's the section one. Um, section two is the management discussion and analysis. Again, this was prepared by um, the finance department, put this together, it gives a good overview of um, items that happen during the year. It even talks about some of the financial statements in this report and how they differ, as well as some of the um, expectations for next year as well. That's the whole section dash two. So that, that was not prepared by us. Right. That's what you gave your audit report based upon that information. Let me ask you this question. Would it be going over and beyond your audit if in fact you've seen things that could be done better? Your job would not be to suggest um, better ways of doing stuff, or do you do that? Do we pay you to do that as well? We include that as part of our audit fee. Um, in the additional letter that we provided in there, if there are any <coughs> things that we feel yeah, would help strengthen your internal controls for efficiency and make them more effective, we put them in the back here. Um, and we did have three items that we call our other comments in the letter that you were provided. Okay, and what were those three? Those three, um, the credit card payment acceptance policy, we had uh, mentioned that at the board, at the city council meeting, the budget overages, and then we also talked about the deficit fund balance. And what did you say about the um, overages and the fund balance? The overages, we said just to make sure that the budget is being monitored throughout the year so that we don't have budget overages in the expenditures. So that would have something to do with the quarterly review mm -hmm. for one, mm -hmm. okay. And then the deficit fund balances, um, that's just something that our firm always puts in here as other comments, just to make sure that governance is aware of this and that you are following um, the deficit elimination plan. So On the different fund balances, okay, yep. go ahead. 
So those are the three items that we put in there as other comments. So after section two, we come to the tab called the government-wide financial statements. Um, and just a little bit of explanation on this. This was something that the Governmental Accounting Standard Board, you'll hear us refer to GASB, um, they're the hierarchy. They came up with a rule of having all of your funds, so you have a general fund, you have a water fund, a sewer fund, and quite a few other funds that we call governmental funds. Um, they came up with the ruling that they wanted them all combined <coughs> into two columns. So that's what this page is, it's page 3-1. And we have the two columns here, your governmental activities and your business type activities. There's a lot more detail in the back that we'll point you to. I think it'll be easier for you to see the, the various funds individually instead of them all combined into just these two columns. And then on the very right, you can see we list all of your component units. And again, there's going to be a page here further back that lists them out separately. And most of the time, um, council members like to see those individually. Let me ask the definition of those component units. Give me an example of that component, one component unit. Um, Hurley. Hurley. Mm -hmm. That would be the Economic Development Fund, the, the Enterprise DDA. Fund, the mm -hmm. DDA. Those are the component units. Correct. And then when you say cash and <coughs> cash equivalents, that means the $30 million on that first line on 3-1 would be the cash and the cash equivalents. Um, it shows that those component units didn't have no pool cash and investments. You see that? Um, they would have some cash and cash equivalents, but they would have no pool cash and investments on that line. Correct? Correct. Okay, I'm with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's what section three really is, is what we call the government-wide statements. So um, I'm going to skip back to the next table. I, want you to, I don't want you to leave 3-1 yet. Okay. Internal balances, 8,661,000. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could relate to that was that had something to do with the general fund deficit. Mm, that is the... Internal balances are the internal service funds that we allocate, and those you're not going to see individually on here. Those are allocated between the business type and the governmental funds. Okay. And I'll point that out in the back to your, what your internal service funds are. So, so that, they washed each other out. So they washed each other out. Mm -hmm. the yep. president the government activities and the business So funds. that ain't what that is. Mm -hmm. That is some internal movement between yep. paying each other off some so we'll keep looking. I couldn't quite figure that out last night, so I appreciate that. Let's see what the other thing is I was looking at. The um, 20 million, which was under customers. How would you define that? Um, that would be your receivables, majority for your water and sewer bills. Because it came under the business type activity, the enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. And then, um, <coughs> I appreciate it. I see in the, um, even though you talked about components, when it got down to the last line of capital assets, and I've seen that 224 million, that don't include Hurley's assets? That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the 108 million. That would be the components asset. Yes, that would be the DDA, the EDC, all of them combined together. So the two hundred and twenty-four million is just the city's assets, whether it's um, the business activity type and or the general government activity type. Correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So that is section three. We have the statement of net position. Um, on 3-1 and 3-2, and then again on 3-3, it's the same thing. It's taking all of the funds and combining them into the governmental, the business type, and the component units. The next tab is your fund financial statement. Don't go, could I okay. hold you up at 3-3? Sure. <coughs> at the bottom of 3-3, 
You got general revenues and um, net position at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you look at um, 3-2 and 3-3, 3-2 starts out liabilities, then it switches to net position. I'm wondering why did you put the, um, I see the governmental activities, the business type, and the totals, but down where it say general revenues, and that section down there, where the first column is 28 million, the second column in business activities is 95 million. You see where I'm at? Yes. And then the total, 123 million. That column is what we look at for the totals of what? That is your total net position by those three columns, those three buckets that we talked about, the governmental activities. So on 3-2, the very last line on 3-2 is the 28 million. That matches 3-3, the first column there. Okay, I see that. Yep, and the same, and it really is your assets equal your liabilities plus net position. Okay, so that means you did the add net subtraction from the liabilities with the assets, and that's how you got that, and then you just repeated that again at the bottom of 3-3. 3-3 is coming up to the same ending balance using revenues and expenditures, so the change in your revenue and expenditures <coughs> for the year added to your beginning net position is going to equal your ending net position, which then matches what was on 3 days. <coughs> so they balanced each other out. Mm -hmm. Say that one more time. Ms. Popular, go ahead. No, you can finish. Go ahead. Um, question, miscellaneous, what falls into that category? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head, really, the this ruling here we follow was required by GASB 34, and it tells us what categories we have to have down here for revenue. Um, and I, off the top of my head, I can't think of exactly. I can look in the we green schedule. Interest schedules. probably in there. So. But it has, what, $2 million? Is that $2 million? Yeah, we can, uh, oh yeah, it's in the box a second. We can tell you what the majority of that is. And what I want you guys from Yo and Yo to understand, if we ask a question that you know you're going to get to the answer with later on in your presentation, just say, um, we know we're going to get to that. And Mr. President, you was a finance chair. If you know that we're spending too much time on something, then you move it along through the chairman. And if anybody in the room has any questions, just jump in there. And um, I'll recognize you. So we moving. Okay, he'll look that answer up yeah, for I'll, us. I'll by the for you guys. So the next, everything good on three dish? Not really, but we got some workshops <laughs> coming up. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're short on time. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> okay, um, the next tab, if we go to that. This is where I was talking about we break down the funds in more detail. So there are that. rules about what is calculated as what we call a major fund. And for this year, you had two funds that were major funds for your governmental, your general fund, and then your federal grant fund. Everything else fell into what they call non-major. And even in the back, we have all the information that totals this non-major. So there's even more detail in the back if you want to look into that. So these next few pages are broken down for your governmental funds, with your two major funds being your general fund and then your federal grants. And then we have the third column of all your other governmental funds included in there, which I'll point out when we get to the back. Let me ask you a question. We on 3-4? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And this is what Mr. President, President <coughs> and I talked about. You talked about the general fund column, the federal grants column, and the non-major general funds column. At the top of that sheet, it said balance sheet as of June 30th, 2014. When I got to the total governmental funds, even though I added it up together, which is the fourth column, mm -hmm. would that be a fair statement that some of those will add up to be the beginning stuff for July 1st? This will all be the beginning balances, yes. That's what I July saw. 1st. And yep. I, I 
I'm wondering why did I have to figure that out. I wish it had been at the top of that column. But that's okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. So that is. Three. So that's what the fourth column kind of is. That's beginning for July 1. Yes. You're if you had have said no, that would have messed my head up. <laughs> but okay, thank you. You're welcome. So that's 3, 4, and 3, 5, the balance sheet. Uh, for your governmental funds broken down in your major funds, which were general and federal funds, and then your non-major. Just Papa, did she answer your question? Are they still looking for it? We have a lot of this interest on taxes. Some of that dollars are in there. About 300 some of that. And then there's some interest on loans in there as well. Before you proceed, you had found that answer and didn't jump in there. You were waiting politely. We moving. You supposed to right. jump in there when you find it. Miss Poplar, anything else? No, <coughs> that's mine. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairperson. Thank you. Okay. 3 7. This is the your statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. Again, based on those categories we just talked about. So we list your general fund and then your federal grants. And again, you'll see that on page 3-8, that ending fund balance or deficit as we have in the general fund will match the net assets as presented on the balance sheet a couple of pages before. Um, that negative deficit, $8,961,000. That's going to um, end up being $9 million because, as you called them earlier, whether it's the right word or not, it was a deficit in one of them components. And that deficit had, I think, to do with the economic development entity or something. And when you add it together, you get our total deficit. Well, those are shown yep, in your component unit column, but right. not in this. This is just your general fund. I here. understand. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that I hear that, you know, the general fund borrowed from the water and sewer fund. And so did you see in your audit or where um, you can't tell from this year's audit that that's what happened. You just know that you can tell from this year's audit. Mm -hmm. You just know that the general fund owes somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but at the fourth column, that... Well, you know it owes the no. sewer and water there's fund a because it's a, there's, a, there's a liability there, right? <coughs> right, yeah, we have the... I mean, you know who it owes. It just doesn't owe oh, yeah. some we mythical... Oh, yeah, we have the footnote right. detail of any transfers in or out, which were those you don't expect to be paid back. But if there is um, the advances, you can see on page 3-4... Now keep, now, now keep in mind, Josh was a finance chair, and we got the finance director and the finance director, I mean the emergency manager in here, so whenever y'all hear something that y'all could help us with from finance, feel free to jump in, because we rolling, we got short <coughs> Okay, go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Freeman. Um, so that's the 8900000 do my colleagues see that mm -hmm. on 3 8? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, now moving on to page 3 10. Now we're talking about your proprietary funds. So we have your sewer fund and your water fund listed here. And those are um, accounted for differently than your governmental funds. So they are considered a proprietary fund, and you can see them, both of them are listed here. And we only have two um, <coughs> proprietary funds. You can see off to the right, the fourth column over is your internal service funds. And as I said, there will be another page in the back where we can talk about what makes that column up. So the next two pages are the uh, statement of net position for your water and sewer funds, followed on 3-12 with your revenue and expenses, so it shows your change in your fund net position for the year for those two funds as well. Can you stop right there? Sure. At the end of fiscal year, June 30th, 2014, what was the net position of the water fund? The water fund was 28282 And that same $28 million started fiscal year starting July 1st. Correct. But okay. 
that 28 million, 21.6 of it is invested in your capital assets and your facilities, and your lines. Okay, of that 28 million, how much was it? 21 million, 673,000. Look at page 311. Yeah. Okay, and what was that? You say it was invested, you mean that was capital assets? That's yep. your buildings, your infrastructure, okay, your so pipes. That's so, what you owe on them. So out of the 28 million, 21 of them was capital assets. And if you follow that second column down, mm -hmm. you've got restricted for money for debt service set aside for 2.8 right. million. 2.8. So that would leave how much? And then 3 million for capital improvements. And okay. Then, and then it leaves you $760,000 in the water fund. Okay, but the capital improvements. That was cash that we designated as capital improvements, or was it <coughs> restricted capital improvement money? Can you tell? It was restricted. Okay, so that money might have came out of some type of restricted capital improvement fund, or you can't tell whether or not we restricted it in the way we did our budget. You can't tell. That's, a, that's an external restriction. It's so, it's, external so his money was collected, I believe, by... For a specific purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Ambrose, do you know? No, no, I'm not here. Okay. Um, see, y'all being very helpful. Okay. Proceed. So that's how we end, that's how we ended that fiscal year. Yes, for water <coughs> sewer. 28 million net. 21 or so was um, capital mm -hmm. assets, and then we had only 700,000 cash available. Mm -hmm. And it was not unrestricted. I mean, it was unrestricted. 700 was, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So then if we turn to, let's go to 3-16. These are your fiduciary funds. You have two. Um, listed here, your pension and benefit trust funds, and then your agency funds. And again, like everything else, there's more detail that we'll get to in the backs for your agency funds. We might better hurry and get to the up. back. Okay, we'll turn faster. Um, let's go to 3-18. Here we list out your component units that we had noted earlier. There was just that one total column on the front on your government-wide statement site. Um, had talked about here are your component units that are broken out here individually um, and they were all audited um, some by us and a couple I think by another CPA firm so they are all included in here but this breaks them out individually if you wanted to look at any of them individually that's 3, 18, 19, and 20 and never do we use our <coughs> auditors to audit or look at the other auditors report do we we do not re-audit them. No, we rely on their information. You rely on, rely on their we opinion. Actually, yeah, we actually provide information to them on what we want them to audit and what they want to report to us so we can include it in our report. It's called a group mm -hmm. audit. It's called a group audit. A group audit because when you have an audit that's performed, like you have the component units that are done by multiple firms, you're the group, you're the leader of the group, they report to you and it's included in your report. So there's standards we have to follow for that. And standards they follow when they yep, do and their they audit. take our information and use the information we provide to them in their planning and doing their audits. What is the next level of audits? Is it such a thing? Mr. Kincaid, you should give me what is it? Forensic. That would be a forensic audit. Yeah, if there was a discrepancy or something that jumped out, and I'll just give you a quick example. Um, there was a millage that was approved in the Parks and Recreation and during the audit it looked like there were some discrepancies of some yep. mm -hmm. things that took place and so we asked for a specific, you can call it a forensic or a, uh, a specific audit within that activity and we found out that they were spending money for traveling, cell phones, uh, a whole host of things and um, then then that department had to pay that fund back out of its operating. About what yeah. year was that, Mr. Kincaid? Do you recall? Well, <laughs> right. yeah, I can't recall. And the forensic audit is typically very specific and detailed. But, right. Uh, and you right. drill down in that area where you found something. Just real quick, what was our a pooled cash fund balance for the city? Oh, we have a total. Yeah, total yeah, pool cash. Yeah, that, I've seen something like that 1.50 million at one point. Yep. Is that what it is? 50 million. So, yeah, I didn't think I read that stuff. I just wanted to point that out. 50 million, and that 
that pool cash is cash from all different accounts that they can use to make investments and type of things and generate interest and stuff. And so it was at one point, what was it, 50 million at the end of um, the year? Mm -hmm. That's what I recall. I say, boy, they got some cash to work with. They be buying CDs and everything. And that's all they can do internal investments, short term, so to speak. And those decisions are made by the finance people, correct, Mr. Ambrose? Yes, sir. I'm learning it. What is the finance chair, <coughs> um, the finance director person's name? I'm the deputy finance director. I'm going to call you the acting finance director is Miss Steele. Mr. Ambrose, you ain't mad if I call her the acting finance person, is you? Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The president is cracking the whip. <laughs> Okay, the next section is the notes. So 321 to 355 gives a lot of detail to the numbers that we've talked about. Um, talks about the different reports, it talks about your component units. It gives the detail behind the transfers, the advances, your fixed assets, all kinds of information included here. Um, Long-term debt, lots of information in here. And this, um, helps explain it and spells it out what the numbers are up front. So I definitely advise you to uh, look through that section as well. <coughs> the next section is the, what we call our RSI, Required Supplementary Information. So this is what you're required to show, budget to actual for your major funds, which was your general fund and then your federal grants fund. What page? 4-1. Uh, 4-1. Or that's one and say, you say that's what you require to show. This is what we're required to show for your budget to actual. Budget to actual. For each major fund, which you have general fund, is your major fund as well as your federal grants. And when you say budget to actual, that means we budgeted something, but at the end of the day, it actually turned out to this. Correct. So I can explain the columns. Your first column is your original budget. That was the budget that was adopted at the beginning of your fiscal year. Then throughout the year, amendments are made. And then the next column, your second column, is your final budget. So that was the budget that was final at June 30, 2014. The third column is what you actually had. So these are your actual revenues and your actual expenditures um, as of June 30th. That when we were out doing the audit, these were your actual numbers. The fourth column then is the difference between your final budget and your actual, the actual column. And so in the column of income taxes on revenue, we don't really want to see that, do we? No. <laughs> and, and that's the one we don't really want to see. <coughs> Expenditures, explain the fourth column as it relates to <coughs> So the same thing. Let's look at your um, total general government, for example. Your final budget for that section of your total general government was eight million six fourteen, and then your actual was Where are you at? Uh, at the bottom of four dash one. Okay. The very last line. Okay. For so final your, eight. Your, yep. Your final budget was eight point six million. Mm -hmm. Your actual was seven point four million. So you were <coughs> under budget. So you spent less than what you budgeted by 1.1 million. That's what we want in that column. We want to spend less. Mm -hmm. well, We'd like you to spend closer. <coughs> I mean, be acting compared to your final budget, right? Okay. You said the actual, the final budget was eight million, mm -hmm. and we actually spent seven four. Mm -hmm. So that means it was one million four hundred. I mean, one million a hundred and forty-seven thousand. That was not really spent. Correct. And you want us to spend more? We want your budget to be more close. We would like to see your budget be seven point five million. But we, but okay, but we we like those we numbers added closer. Eight point seven million. Well, it's better to be under for sure. But we right. like the, we like your budget and actual to be closer. That's one of our management comments. I think we had is we want your budget and actual to be amended more often and reviewed. 
and have those numbers be closer together so there's not such a gap at the end of the year. Okay, let's say in this case, even though you might want that, um, you ain't suggesting we just spend money to do that. No. Ain't it a way to fix that? We could go back and the men, we could go back and amend the final down, right? Right, correct. So we could amend the final down and then get an actual to be closer than what you want. Mm -hmm. And if we amend the final down, that means we move money around to somewhere else. Or if you, you wouldn't, you didn't necessarily incur any additional costs. It would just be more reflective. Uh, yeah. David, you're saying you want that to be more closer to our uh, actual, what is the positive that it would show us if it was, instead of, I mean, to me, it's like saying, oh, we're being thrifty and we save so much you definitely, It's definitely a conservative budget philosophy that you have, right, in this week, yeah. when, you're, when you're in a deficit, you're trying to work towards that. You want to always be under. You want to be conservative in that, in that light to make sure you're not overspending. But when you're, when you're looking at it from our perspective coming outside, we have a $1.1 million variance and a $7.5 million account. We want, we would like your budget, your your gas to be, you know, your budget is your, your calculated gas at the end of the year to be closer to your actual results. Yes, yeah, and that's being nice. You're saying we're not planning really uh, proof. That's what you're saying. Well, your, your fiscal results are very good. Right, right. I, I got that. But what you're saying, we need to do better planning. And that's the thing. Closer. It's not a deficiency or anything like that. Right. We know that. It's that's just something, good. it's something to be able to make it even a little bit better. It's that's just exactly. a good practice. But what I would say to that is if we did turn out this way, I'm a, we're shooting for some that we haven't done before, which is a 15%. Um, would I be saying it right at the end of the budget year? We want 15%. Um, what would be the proper term? You're, you're looking for a 15% fund balance, part of a fund balance policy. And obviously, we have a minus nine. Right to start. Right. So, <laughs> so, so getting to a plus eight would be like really good. So would that be? Um, this gets us that way. Beg your pardon. This is one of the reasons. <coughs> general fund. Yes. Okay. This is one of the reasons that we were able to go from twelve point nine million dollar deficit last year to nine million dollar deficit this year. And yep. I think their comment is that if we're doing quarterly re reviews, that perhaps by third quarter you would have a better feel for some of that and that you might amend your budget down so you could be more so you could be more open at that point in time. I understand because that's one of their best practices. But yeah. what would we do? Take that money and not try to spend it. We put it in our fifteen percent fund you balance. Would just amend, well you would just amend I think if you're following through you would just amend the expenses down. So you would be saying to you the administration would be saying to the council and the third quarter, our expenses are coming in less than we thought. We don't have to do it. We're not obligated to spend that money, particularly when we're trying to reduce the deficit. Right. But we'd be able, to, we'd be in our planning sense telling you more early, earlier. By third quarter, it looks like this. And then That's decisions would be that. made from there. Yes. Yeah, so on 4-2, if you look on 4-2, the third line from the bottom where we have excess of revenue or run expenditures. If that second column, if we did amend those expenditures and had re reduced the budget a little bit, then that change, that 1029000 would increase, so it would bring you closer to where you actually came in at the end of the year, which was $3.9 revenues over expenditures. Thank you. Thank you for Mr. Chairman, can I just ask, I, I, <clears throat> the one variance to the to the negative was on the income taxes, Jerry. I mean, did, did we have a sense of what, I, it, it's our, obviously an art and a science, but. <clears throat> that's, that's a good point, Mayor. I mean, some of this, yes, I understand best practice, but we also understand that, you know, for income tax, for example, you don't collect June's income tax until, our, yeah, until July, mid-August. And so to make some declaratory statement budget-wise that says we're going to achieve what we think, I mean, it's a little difficult to do. So I mean, and some budget practices allow us, when that money come in 60 or 90 days later, based upon what I read, some money can come in 60 days after so the end of the that's year. Why, that's why I'm saying exactly for income tax, because right. the 
income tax that's collected in July is actually for June. Oh, but right. it reflects but in it that same thing. But it goes back into the June 30th statement. Right. Okay. All right. I understand that that's practice, but you know, I'd, be more, I'd be more worried if we were the other side where we were like <laughs> spending yeah. above what we right. budgeted. Oh, for sure. Right. Maybe a whole other di different discussion. Yeah. And remember, we love sitting around the table talking finance. <laughs> so I'm listening some more. Okay, 4-3 is the budget to actual for your federal grants. Again, the same columns that we talked about where you have your original budget, your final budget, and then your actual column. And then the fourth column is the variance between your final budget and your actual. 4-4, four, four, 5, and 6 are some required um, reporting information that we are required to show in your report for your MERS, your Municipal Employees Retirement System, as well as some OPEB information. Your other post employment benefits are recorded on 4 6. It was something that had went to MERS yet, and they was expecting somewhere in the future it might go to MERS. Ms. Ambrose, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about? Okay, we'll move on. I'm going to show you. I read something that was somebody. Well, yeah, we're still in the, I mean, the, uh, yeah, our DC portion of our plan has not been transferred to MERS. It was removed. And ain't no way. The DB plan, the, D, the defined benefit portion, we had nothing to do We can't keep it. No, it's all, See, I know it's all it. restricted, reserved. I got Not happy. I here, say, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. Can we bring our stuff back from MERS? No, that's not going to help you either. <laughs> okay, well, let's keep moving. So on page 4, 6, is what point Can we bring it back from MERS and take it to the general fund? Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 hey, look. Hey, water, water, water. Water. Let's keep moving. Oh, These yeah. guys got jokes. I'm sharing this. Let's keep moving. I just want to point out in 4 6, this, this is your other post employment benefits, your health care. That's $240 million. It's unfunded, which is a big number. I just want to point out what I mentioned the other, last time we were here. That number was $860 million. Say that again. Four years ago. Say page that again. 4 6. On page 4 6, the, the last six. double underlined number. Okay. $240 million, 525, 197 mm -hmm. is your unfunded actuarial liability. Yeah. That number was $860 million four years ago. <laughs> How does this number going to be affected with the um, federal lawsuit? Depends on. Does this number reflect the changes? That yeah, it reflects the plan that is in effect as the, the, the plans that were in effect as of June 30th. So if we so lose if that lawsuit, this then this would jump yes. back up to yes. 100 or 800. Well, no, no, no. This would go back up. There's no question that this number would go back up. Whether it would go back to 850 is probably not the case. It probably go up. Go up something like that. It go up significantly, but not back up to the level that was there. Because that also includes our current employees who are on a different. Right, and we've been able to make some plan changes for the, 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 There's numbers of employees who are not part of the lawsuit this year. Okay. Wouldn't it be wise to devise a plan in case it went up? Have we got that in place? In case we lose the lawsuit. This one, this particular number is a symbol of what currently is the unfunded obligation. Um, you know, we've had to make estimates, and, and, and I think, again, it would require time and effort and cost to have someone do that kind of valuation. And I'm not sure I know what the benefit is of that now. We, do, we know pretty well that that number would go up significantly. It would not go up to 850. Well, you got Mr. Kincaid's attention, Mr. Kincaid. No, I mean, that number is really based on the actuarial evaluation spread out over as we reduce it down from 25 years to 30 <coughs> years. To, no. no, no, this is this is OPEP. This is this is in large part just the health care. This, this is all health care. This is not okay. I would love to have more discussion on that in our work mm -hmm. ses session. How about that? Wouldn't we want to talk about that? Because I believe we should do two scenarios. One, what? if it stays the same, and one, that we might be prepared for it if I it think, didn't go up. I 
think you're talking about budgeting wise, right? In our annual budget. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's what not what this number is. Right, I understand We've that. We've done the other numbers. It, 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 that's in his in question. In terms of what would we have to budget if we lost the lawsuit, we've done that. That's not what this is. Okay, then I that's don't understand. You well, you've heard, I think, numbers of times that we have said that the difference between what we were doing and if we, be, before the lawsuit, and what would happen if we lost the lawsuit was a difference of about $5 million a year in retire, okay. direct retiree health care expenses. And so we that know that number. This is what translates some of that into a question of what's the long-term liability. The long-term. Right. right. That's what this right. is, the long-term. Right. We yes. know yearly about what. Right. And so the yearly would take care of the long-term. We're pay-as-you-go. So this is kind of like if we were to go out of business, this is what we would need to cover our liability. <coughs> yes, if you found out, for example, if, if, we found out somebody, if you were selling all the assets of the city, you had the city, and we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm just saying, if, for example, one were selling, <coughs> valuing the city for sale, there would be assets and there would be liabilities. This would be one of those liabilities that <coughs> value the asset that says you have this liability. And so, Miss Steele, what you heard him say, if he was gone, because he ain't fine, he emergency manager, we want him out. If he was gone, you could tell us what just what he said, correct? Sure. You understood that? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Popper, <laughs> we gonna keep moving. Question, uh, Mr. Ambrose, where are we with the lawsuit? We are in litigation. Um, I mean, I don't know what to trip about it. We are operating under what's called a modified injunction from the court, where the court has allowed us to make certain changes in retiree health care while the lawsuit proceeds off which means that it has to get scheduled for arguments and all that. It's up, it's up to the court to make those schedules. They have not scheduled, they have not scheduled a date. Uh, there are periodic meetings with the, with the judge who wants to know whether the two parties continue to work together, number one, to resolve any issues that may exist, operating under a modified injunction, and whether they are working to try to settle this stuff. So do we don't, we don't have a need? Uh, Next scheduled date yet? Yeah. As far as you said, it's right. No, I mean, th this is like a guy a cloud hanging over the city. Um, to the auditing firm, yo and yo, if you was to run through a walk through, how much more time you need? Mm. Just what we've got left is combining schedules, so why don't we go through it quick? How much time? Five, ten minutes. Five minutes. Bro. <coughs> That's bro, the president is kind of kicking me. Okay. Not literally under the <laughs> tape. The next few sections um, are going to be real quick. We have the combining fund statements. So right before section five, they talk about each of the funds that we're going to show separately here. And that's where I told you we show all of those funds that were combined together to make that one column called your non-major fund. What page funds. you on? 5-1. 5-1. So here are all your non-major governmental funds, and they're listed on 5, 1, and 2. Okay. So this no. is where individually they're shown, and then they're combined together and make up your total of the non-major in the front. Non-major in the front. Mm -hmm. Go back to the non-major in the front. Give me a page number. A tab. 3-7. 3-7.
You have to dump in all the total assets for each fund, total liabilities, total revenue, and total expenditures. Compare <coughs> that if it's 10% or more, and then we compare it to your business type if it's 5% or more. That's what categorizes it as a major or non major. So now we're on 5 that's 3. Yes, so same funds. But now we're talking about your revenues and expenditures. So again, your non major governmental funds on 5 3 and 5 4. Your total column there on 5-4 will match the total up front. 5-1 and 5-2 was what? 5-1 and 5-2 five five is the balance sheet. 5-3 and 5-4 five five and five is the um, revenues and revenues. expenditures. Mm -hmm. okay. So 5-4 will match 3-7. The 13,066,841. Matches the third column on 3-7, 13,066,841. Revenue. So have, mm -hmm, that shows the detail of what makes up those figures. And 3-8 was the balance. Yep. And I'm rolling with you okay. now, 5-5. Five five. Okay. All right. Mr. I'm Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I'm not going to talk about them. I, can I, Mr. I, Mayor got I, some. Um, sure. Back to 5-4. Just for, okay. for informational purposes, there, there's often during our budget discussions um, a number of questions about the public safety millage. I, I thought it may just be helpful to just Point that remind um, you know the, the body what those numbers are as far as you know the revenues, the expenditures, the fund balances. We get questions about what those numbers are, and I, people can find those numbers you know right here. So what did they, at the end of fiscal year 2013, Mr. Mayor, what was the revenue? What was the fund balance? The, the, fund, the fund balance is the five million, which is the second line from the bottom. That's the balance. That's where we started. That's the start. That's what the balance is. And, we and added, where we ended up We at. added 3.39 million to it. From the previous year? No, in, in 14. In 14. So currently there's an 8.4. Million and that's available. what we ended up with at the end of mm -hmm. two right. at the end of fiscal yeah. year right. on June 30th. Yeah. So eight million, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so all of that eight million mm -hmm. is going to be somewhere budgeted a part of it somewhere. It is. In two. About, about half of it's budgeted in 15 and half of it's budgeted in 16. I right. think you provided us with that information, that breakdown mm -hmm. in a very yeah. simple uh, spreadsheet. But the mayor wanted that highlighted. Yeah, just. And you can do that with each of the funds because we often get questions about garbage collection or street lights, and, and this table lays those those numbers out. All right, so we rolling, yo and yo. Okay, five, 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 six, seven, eight, all the way through to eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Is the budget to actual for each of those non-major funds? We're going to go through all of them. I just and that's it out. really what y'all are looking to see all of that budget to actual after you do, and that's a major part of the audit. That's it. It's just an important part of the audit. That's an important. Oh, you said you ain't going. You are audit man. It's all important, but that's <laughs> an important part. It's the proper yeah, way. And she's right. It is a state requirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The next section, so five seventeen. These are your internal service funds, and we have four, data processing, fringe benefits, central maintenance garage, and self-insurance. So these funds charge other funds, and the revenue gets coded back here. That's what I was talking about in the front. Um, GASB requires us to allocate these funds between governmental or business type. That's where it gets confusing with the eight million nine hundred ninety-one thousand. And the eight million six hundred thousand. Yeah, that goes That's in that. The, mm -hmm. So they'll pay it and build. People get billed back all around. The around city. the funds, yeah, because all of the funds are using, you know, the the motor your central maintenance garage. So DPW department, water fund, sewer fund needs to use those various trucks. So they bill for that. I might get in trouble for this, but I got to do it. Mr. Freeman, Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Kincaid, somebody tell me what that self-insurance fund is. I know what it is, but she says one of them where they borrowing money internally. How do we know how much it's going to be? And well, self-insurance, we carry, for example, a liability insurance policy. We have it's been very difficult for this city to get liability insurance. We've been largely self-insured. 
um, we to the tune of how much. So now we, a year ago, we had a $1 million policy with a $1 million deductible. This, we were able to get a $10 million policy, but it has a $3 million deductible. This protects the city in the event of you know, very significant you know, litigation. <coughs> Litigation, judgments, what have you. Oh, so, you know, I mean, you want this to the extent that we can. You want this city protected for those kinds of things. That's what this is. And the reason I ask because the name was kind of deceptive. Yep. I hear you say a million dollar policy with a million dollar deductible, but then I hear a ten million dollar yep. policy with a three million dollar <coughs> deductible. So even if it's called self insurance fund, it ain't like we said ten or twenty right. million that covering stuff. It is a policy with a premium. It's just it called the now. self. It was not. It is now. We didn't you used to have one. Mr. Kincaid, I'm sorry. go ahead. No, I want to hear what you say. We, we could not get insurance right. five years ago. That's right. Everything that was paid was paid out of basically the general fund, and all the funds were contributing to the self-insurance fund. So when there was a lawsuit for whatever reason, sidewalk problem, whatever, yeah. whatever, it was paid directly out of the city's self-insurance. So I was thinking <coughs> right. <coughs> You've seen it. So who found this policy? You, Miss Danbrook? Yeah, we got this one. You proud? <laughs> yeah, I did not. I did not tell you. I did not think it was in the city's best interest to have only a, a, a one million dollar liability policy with a one million dollar. What liability. state you find it in? We have good folks looking, searching the market. Okay. Well, All good. Right. You know, I think we, you wasn't an emergency manager when you found it, but you was finance, wasn't you? I don't think we need an emergency manager. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> if we had, had um, <coughs> this uh, liability insurance a few years ago, would it The Genesee Towers. I understand what you're talking about, but I don't understand the grounds upon which the judgment came down on the city and whether that would be a <coughs> loss or not. Well, we didn't have enough money to pay it. I know. That but it may not have been covered some by the Some policy. losses you have aren't covered by oh, insurance. That's, that's what I'm so saying. And I can't that, 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 that particular so. lawsuit may not have been covered, not have been covered by, by the type of coverage right, we have. Right, now. right. And I don't know that answer. Okay. Mr. Nelson, Mr. Winfrey. Um, Ms. Van Buren, y'all ready? Y'all okay? Okay. Yo and yo, keep rolling. We are almost there. My last item is the statistical section, and you'll see on that tab it's unaudited. So this information was all prepared um, by the finance department, but it's required as for you to receive your CAFR, your certificate of achievement. So you'll see on. Um, Right before page 6-1, it talks about the various items in there, financial trends, uh, revenue capacity, debt capacity. Um, so there's lots of detail in here, too, that's required for your CAFR. CAFR. That's your report. CAFR, your report. That's what CAFR means. <laughs> um, Mr. Um. So, Youngstrom? <coughs> what is Dave Dean Youngstrom. Mr. Youngstrom, anything you want to add to uh, well, uh, questions? Oh, well, yeah, I got one for both of y'all, and I want to ask this question, and you kind of help me put it in perspective. There's a column that deals with money coming in from other sources, whether it's the state or whether it was grant money, but, you know, it was money coming in revenue. And then we had um, a... $8.9 million deficit in the general fund. If we get money coming in, for example, from, um, say, for instance, the state of Michigan, and this money is somewhat <coughs> unrestricted, would it be a wise practice to take it in through the general fund? and then transfer it to the water and sewer fund in order to knock down a deficit. Don't look at him. And so 
You familiar with our deficit, right? It's going to wash to the general fund, though, when you do that. Explain to me what that means, because I've heard that before. So the, the revenue is going to come in as a state revenue, let's say hypothetically. Yeah. On the expenditure side, you're going to have a transfer out to the other fund. Go slow. On the expenditure side, you're going to have a transfer out to the other fund. Where, okay. where it's actually going to be spent. Okay. But it came in through the general fund. Okay, so the net to the general fund would be a wash. If the, for example, two million that came in was used to pay off what the general fund owed the water and sewer fund, how can that not be to an advantage? If we owe the water and sewer fund and we took it in through the general fund, if we didn't pay the water and sewer fund, it would just sit there. But the minute we transfer it to the, if it was just said in the general fund, but the minute we transfer it to the wide and sewer fund, couldn't we tag it, pay off on the debt? Well, the Why do you keep looking at him? It depends what the earmark is on that, on that dollars. I'd have to look and see what you're, what you're Okay. Doing. So it depends on maybe the earmark. I'm looking for an independent answer, and you keep looking at him. I mean, who paid y'all? Him? Do you stare the answer in front of him without looking at him? I'm now suspicious. I'm going to ask somebody else because every I watch people's eyes. I'll sit over here. How about that? Yeah, because I don't want you looking at him. Now you can kind of made me. I look at the meaning. Okay, so here we go. Are we done? Who got questions other than me? Because I don't even want to ask you now. Do you know the answer to that question? Which one? What I just asked him. Because he keeps looking at me. No, he's right. Okay, well, you deal with him. We'll find out. I believe it's a way to do it. Okay, any more questions from any council people? we got other things on the agenda, so let's get more on. Everybody happy with the audit? Any questions? <laughs> yo and yo, we thank you. And if you think about that answer to the question when you get by yourself, you write me a note. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're all right. All right. Hey, now, is it something that we need to receive or do or anything? Mr. King, Mr. Freeman? Okay, we done. Thank you. We moving on through the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Public Safety Committee. I don't think there was anything left over from any of those other committees. Ms. Van Buren? Yes, there was something about, uh, I think it was attached to the back of our agenda, and I think they wanted us to discuss it about a request to approve the shop ordinance that was sent to us uh, by the emergency manager from the chief of police. Oh, no, it was sent from the chief. The chief was in here. Should go to regular committee. Yeah, just yeah, they'll do it then as a regular committee. Mr. Ambrose, you know what you're talking about. No, I don't. Know I just, that. I just want to mention it because we had no chance to. Where are you going, say man? anything about it? Huh. All right. Okay. Yeah. So. The other thing was mentioned about the need to uh, help with the background checks of the marijuana provisioning centers. The, they, that, that's not for this meeting at all. Okay. Yeah, we'll I'm deal with sure that in just regular committee. Okay. But, but y'all exactly know what, what she's talking about, about, don't you? Oh, yeah. that wasn't here. What this unfinished business is going to be as we move forward, this was kind of our first meeting, and we weren't really sure how we were going to handle it, is if there's something that is um, brought from the committee and sent to this, from the individual committee and sent to this committee. That's where we'll deal with it here. Um, so well, not, I, mean, I don't think that any of those committees had anything to yeah, send. This is our first no, me, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Let me do it this way, Mr. President. We gonna get through some appointments, yeah. and I want to table the unfinished business think, part of it. Yeah, I don't think. And then I might it. come back. Yeah, it is because I do want to discuss some of that committee stuff. We can do that. And, and so I want to get the it. appointments done. And he said he don't think we're going to table it, but discussion ain't on here. But that's what I want to do. I want to, um, if it's all right, no objections, I want to suspend the regular order. Or I can obtain a motion to suspend the regular order. I want to get to the appointment. 
Let's the just go to the appointments, and then if we got if you got discussion at the end, then we'll just deal with it at the end. How about that? Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Chairman, I'd move uh, 150102, 150103, and 150104 to come for approval. It's been moved at 15102. Mr. Kincaid, listen to me. 15103, 15104. It's been moved and supported that those three appointments be moved to council. Um, I would go with a roll call vote. Are they included in the point one? They are not. They are not. Um, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Wait, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I had a chance to take a look at the, the document that was in the packet over the weekend and, and look back at my notes from our, our evening discussion, <coughs> and I tried to, to suggest a few things. I will say I think the document, even as it stands, is a good representation of our work, and it's certainly something that we can, we can build from. Um, but I, I did come up with, with three potential um, things that you may want to consider. Uh, the first is... Um, it includes an item in our preamble um, to the to the charter. Um, you know, th this is the Bible, right? Right. Okay. Um, For some, we, you know, we have who a, believe in democracy. Yeah, but on on I, the preamble, yeah. we have a, a commitment to ensure equality of opportunity for all persons. I thought that may be something that we could add to our, our mission, so that we're we're not only providing services, but we're providing services for a purpose. And, and the overarching purpose would be to ensure uh, equality of opportunity. Um, the, the second item I thought we might want to do is um, that goal, that goal three that you have now is, is essentially a, a, a neighborhood uh, safety and, and quality of life goal. Uh, we currently use the terms uh, safe, secure, and healthy. Uh, I thought that our, our efforts around blight elimination and actually the sanitation <coughs> service is really about creating a clean environment. Um, so you could consider a goal that would read the city will provide for a safe, secure, healthy, and clean environment in which to live, work, learn, and play. Um, that would uh, imply that uh, goal four would drop the, the waste collection um, so that goal four would be focused on hard physical infrastructure and goal three would be um, focused on neighborhood quality of life and safety in a more, in a more comprehensive fashion. Um, the, the, the last uh, thought I had for you to consider would be possibly a new goal, um, again in accordance with the preamble of the charter, uh, the city will secure the equal protection of the law for each person in accordance with fundamental human rights. Um, currently, there's not much in the goal that speaks directly to the work of the courts, um, the city attorney's <coughs> office, as far as their, um, their work with the courts, it, it, it doesn't speak directly to elections uh, and the value of you know, one person, one vote. Um, this would be a, a goal that would, that would emphasize that, although you could certainly argue that it's already embedded, again, in the charter. So um, th those, are, those are three thoughts that I came up with. And again, I'll just add that I think the document as it stands is certainly workable. Um, I, I would support it if you go that direction. Um, but these are a couple changes uh, for your consideration. Mr. President, I mean, Mr. Mayor, did you, what's the guy's first name who was at the um, South Saginaw location? Right, uh, Dr. Scorsoni. What was his first name? Eric. Oh, okay, that's what okay. I thought. Did you talk to him about it? I, I didn't. I, 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 I share these with the council president for his okay. consideration. Um, I will. Um, Ms. Madam Clerk. If you recall, Mr. Mays, uh, at the uh, workshop conducted by Dr. Garcone, I did mention the preamble to the charter, uh -huh. and he didn't seem to have a problem with uh, maybe convincing number one so that the things that the mayor just mentioned were all included. Let me ask this question. So it question. was run by him. Let me ask this question, because I'm going to get out of here on time, so y'all might as well figure out how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to get out of here on time. Um, this is what I want to know. Is this time sensitive? 
Hey, Mr. Day. Hey, sir. Is this time sensitive, Mr. Ambrose? He's shaking his head. <laughs> now I'm going to say this. He's shaking his head. We spent time on this as a group, and Mr. Mayor was there. Mr. Ambrose, do you see this able to be amended at any time? You can uh, you review it annually. I think what you adopt today provides the framework for the mayor administration to develop a budget. So I don't think you can change it every week. I think you would have an opportunity to change it in another year. Well, let me say this, uh, Mr. Ambrose. Now, you know, as elected officials, we gonna hear what you're saying, but you know, we gonna make some decisions. But we just <coughs> gotta check in you out, cause you know how, where I stand. Let's hear what the president got and to I, say. I don't think I've particularly got any issues or problems with what the mayor's suggesting here. So I'd make a substitute motion that we incorporate these changes into it, um, and then just move forward. Uh, sure. Okay, so um, just a minute. Let me do this the proper way. I gave him the floor, not knowing he was going to make a substitute motion. <laughs> so it's been a substitute motion put on the floor to amend. Um, it's going to be 150100.1 with the... Um, Point two. And so it would be a point two to if the amendment goes through, we gonna vote on it. I'm gonna entertain your support because I did give them flow. To add the um, strategic plan, vision, mission, and goals, um, an addendum um, that Mr. Walling had just passed after him and the president had talked to. So that's been moved and supported. Mr. Davis? It's up for discussion now, right? It's up for discussion. I came in on the last end, and I really didn't want to make a comment because I'm coming in on the last end, but number C, alphabet C, I seen when the mayor was speaking, there's some ambiguity there. Uh, I mean, there's a little uncertainty there because you said that it's not speaking in full content, which means that it leaves room for misunderstanding because it's not really speaking direct from what you just said, right? Am I correct? You say, well, it don't say this and it don't say that. That can be a problem. And it can be a problem based on interpretation. And then we'll be start playing word semantics. Now, I mean, I'm not gonna let you in right now. I can be wrong, I'm not gonna say nothing else, I can be wrong. Well, you said what you wanna say, you got any more to say, because you are welcome to say it, we fixing the boat, but I want you to be satisfied. You wanna hear what he got to say? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Mayor, you wanna hear what you got to say? Well, th these these are all, they, they are all broad goals, so I think that's, that's an important point we have to consider. Um, but the reason I suggested this one was because under the current seven goals that were in the uh, the point one resolution, th there's not anything that's that I said speaks to the the role of the courts or or much about the city clerk's office as far as elections go. Um, you could, you know, maybe say it fits under the open and financially sus uh, sustainable and citizen access, but I thought a new goal eight that that specifically reiterated a commitment to providing equal protection under the law would be a stronger would be a stronger statement. Okay, but I listened to the operative word maybe. See when the word maybe is in put or in place, that can leave some misunderstanding. Because down the line somebody somebody may come and say, why isn't it speaking anything in specific about court? Why is it speaking about the other things that you said that is not specifically stated? So that leaves room for misunderstanding, misinformation, and it could be a lot. It could be a lot of words semantics. Mr. On. Davis, Mr. President, anything in favor of this, or anybody else in guess it want to be heard? Uh, anybody in record. favor want to be heard? Uh, I'll put it on the Mr. Record. Ambrose, so. any chiming in? Well, I put it on the record. So when we get attacked, with people saying, "Why isn't this saying this?" and "Why is this not doing this?" Then remember, I put it on the record saying that there was some. I got a question, Mr. Ambrose. Do you think that this hurts or affect this thing in any way? I think that it it adds value to you as a council, which you should add. 
Uh, I would say that with, with any set of words, there's always room for interpretation. I think that will, that will become more clear, uh, number one, when the council sets budget priorities, and number two, when the administration presents a budget for your consideration. And when you look at a budget proposal and say, well, that doesn't reflect what I thought that said, then you have the opportunity to okay. deal with that in that sense. I'm going to call Doesn't for the mean? vote in a minute, but Ms. Dambrose, have you been talking to the mayor and Mr. Freeman on this? Uh, only, to the extent, only to the extent they communicated to me that they were had some potential modifications to the language. It didn't seem it like you had. Um, Mr. Davis, then we're going to call for the vote. Okay. And, and the reason why I state this, and I state this clearly, is because I always look at from a legal standpoint, when you're dealing with law or anything that is of importance, we try our hardest to not place something that can be misconstrued, misunderstood, and leave room for one to have his own independent interpretation. Because then it caused a bunch of chaos and confusion. Is it some way that we could have placed that on there where we can have a certainty? Because it, it, it's just a broad, it's abstract. But that's just my this statement. I don't say anything else. This is a motion, and it's going to be called 1501001.2. And the motion is to add the wording to the strategic plan, vision, and mission and goals. It's an amendment. And the amendment is in the context, context of this time addendum. And so this is to move it to the floor. When, to when, amend it. No, we'll have to, to amend it. And then when we get out there, then, okay, then we'll, we'll circle the back project. on the move. Yeah. Mr. Nelson. I, I just have a question. Uh, uh, Vice President uh, Davis made a point there. Has the legal, did, did, did Peter look at this at the, the last one? Did you run that by the no. city attorney or anything at all? I didn't. I incorporated it. I incorporated it from the existing preamble to the charter. Okay. 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 So this is for the amendment. You gonna have a yay and a nay vote. If we vote yay, it's amended, and then we'll vote to see if it moves to the floor at this point. If we vote nay, then we got the original. Mm -hmm. All in favor of the amendment. Aye. Signified by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Opposed. All opposed, which is, even though it passed. The ayes have it, so it's been amended. I'm going to start wanting to do these roll calls, and anytime anybody wants a division, Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Chairman, I move it to council for approval. There's been a motion placed on the floor by Mr. Kincaid that 150100.2 as amendment is moved to council out on the floor for action and has been supported by Ms. Poplar. Is there any discussion on that motion? To move it to the floor? Yeah. Well, I still stand on my record. I still stand what I stated. I mean, it may sound like I am a novice, and I am. But I do have a lot of sense when it comes to words. I pay attention to words. There is some ambiguity here. And what I don't see is there is nothing that is solid and concrete but that is going to cause confusion. The city will secure the equal protection of the law for <coughs> each person in accordance with fundamental human rights. This provides a goal for the city attorney's office, courts, clerks, well, I'll say this, you'll have a chance to deal with it on the floor uh, with Mr. Bay. Now, I might support it on the floor, but um, it's the move out of here. And so any more discussion about this on the floor? I was kind of nervous to do the amendment, but, you know, look like we okay and we'll revisit it next year. But if you come up with some on the floor, um, I'm easy to listen to. Any more discussion? All in favor of moving it to the floor, let me do it this way. 150100.2 has been moved and supported. 
And the motion was that it moves to the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Opposed. All right, the ayes have it. So we got 150105. Zero, zero, I'll entertain I'll some I'll action. I'll move 105 and 106 to council. Support. Yeah. Are those both connected? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ben, I would, I would, in a, I would um, honor, I would honor that action to keep them together. So it's been moved, and um, did I hear any support? Yes, sir. Mr. Nelson. So it's been moved and properly supported. That's one five zero one zero five and one five zero one zero six um, be moved to council. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I want to say this. When I seen this come back, I was kind of let down because when it passed, nobody caught it for a uh, public hearing. I thought, in fact, um, and you can interrupt me, anybody, if I'm wrong, I thought, in fact, that the emergency manager would catch it. I thought, in fact, that the city attorney would catch it. But somebody did catch it. And whoever caught it, whether it was the emergency manager, the city attorney, the mayor, the president, it wasn't me, it's back. And so um, I'm glad to see stuff done right. Now, um, my question, and I think it's answered, it will rescind the previous resolution, and it will set it up for a public hearing as it relates to Stewart Street. Everybody understand what this is? I think I do. Okay, so it's been moved and properly supported. Here in no other discussion, 150105 and 150106 has been um, properly supported and moved to council. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, the ayes have it. Before we I got adjourn, one thing too before we adjourn. So. Okay, um, Mr. President, go ahead. Last week, the clerk gave us some information on our training. I think okay. she's only heard back from one person, Councilman Winfrey. Um, I think that is one of the bullet points that the emergency manager says that we need to hit in order to um, move forward with transition. So let's keep that all in mind. Uh, I know that um, I'm not sure where Councilman Nelson was because he's been here before, so we may already have some things under his belt. Um, but there's also um, opportunities more advanced opportunities in February. Well, I guess this is February. Toward, in March. Yeah, towards the end of the month. So we need to make sure that we take advantage of those opportunities with the league um, to make sure that we get our certification. So, Mr. Winfrey, you communicated with Madam Clerk. Yes. Uh, plus, um, Ms. Popular. I, it's towards the end of the 21st, 22nd, something like that. And Frank and Muff again. But there's advanced. But there's advanced classes at that same weekend. Well, whatever I can do to get this little six points. Let me say this. Um, I've heard what the president said, and I want the emergency manager and the governor to know that I didn't go to um, Central Michigan. I didn't go to University of Michigan. I come out of Michigan <coughs> State. And I'm here to tell you that our child in the rules of this city says 18 years and older. But I'll take additional training. But I don't want nobody telling me that if you don't do this, you don't get out. I stay on the emergency manager for 18 years before everything they do and say, I hop to it. So I'm a very well-trained Michigan State Spartan. I hear what y'all are saying, but I will not be held hostage to all these do's and don'ts. Now let me say this in saying that. Um, we'll see what we do. And we went to the last one, and it was very educational up in Frankenmuth. But I just don't like all of the do's and don'ts. When you give us our traveling money back, you know, I work for 315 every two weeks. Now we're taking on two meetings a, a month. We're taking on responsibilities, and I'm here to tell you, I do this job for free. But when I look across the board, council persons, in my opinion, deserve 
<coughs> equal pay for equal work. Um, let me say this, next committee meeting, I want to do more for the committee reports. Mr. Freeman, I really thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Mayor, everybody, I'm glad that you attended, and to the public, I always believe in open meetings. Anybody from the public okay? Are we ready to go out to the floor? Anybody in the public? Is a public meeting? You say, let's go. Let's go. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <coughs> this mo uh, The meeting has been moved to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. The ayes have it, and so on. We are adjourned. Or we were rolling to get in and out of here. This is the Flint water or Burton water. Uh -huh. Miss Brown, are you drinking it? Miss Brown, it must be good then. What am I doing? <laughs> Who made that motion to adjourn? Who oh, made that motion to adjourn? I think Miss Popper did. Scott Kincaid. Who said it? Oh. I got oh, okay, Scott Kincaid. Uh, <laughs> you okay, Thank you, sir. Hey, you want that? Yeah. You want that? Not bad. This is the one we're looking for. Oh, the, the, uh, Franklin Yeah, she wants the hammer and the pins all together today. Yeah, my road map and finance. Are you black man? <laughs> All right, bro. Y'all good?